let's face it, men and paint don't mix. Oh, you guys promise to do the painting. You even go out and buy the paint. But by the time you're actually up a ladder with a brush in hand, everything's settled to the bottom of the can. <laughs> and same with the paint. Now, stirring paint is messy and slow and work. So here's a handy tip. Let your car do the mixing. <laughs> Just duct tape the can of paint to the center of your wheel and then drive around. I'll tell you, in two minutes, that baby will pour like the day she came out of the store. Just make sure the tape is on there nice and tight. Oh, yeah. And make sure the lid is on nice and tight, too. It's the Red Green Show! <laughs> and now here's the man who makes it all look so easy and so cheap and so messy and so... Here he is, your host and hero, my uncle, Red Green! Thank you very much. Appreciate a big, 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 big week up the lines this week, Harold. You are going to be so proud of me. Well, I would welcome that. <laughs> yeah, actually, what we're doing is we're building a little racetrack up here for our for our four by fours and our riding mowers and whatever equipment guys can sneak home from work. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Sneaky Peterson has a forklift that'll do seventy clicks. <laughs> but now there's this old building right where we want to put the chicane. Hey, that, that's the original Possum Lodge. Yeah. Oh, that's an excellent example of really pioneer board and batten. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, ordinarily, we would just flatten that with a backhoe or a wrecking ball or a Moose Thompson. <laughs> but this time, we're going to do the politically correct thing. Yeah. As a favor to the local historical society, we're going to actually move the building to a safer spot. Huh? Uh, oh, yeah. that is great yeah, news. That's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Would you like the name of a company that does that sort of thing? You know, you know that moves old pioneer buildings and things? Because they have companies that actually do that sort of thing, you know? They have the proper equipment and experience to make. Why do I even bother? Well, exactly. you know? <laughs> Harold, come on. You think we're going to spend 500 bucks to move a $2 building? No. <laughs> no, of course not. Yeah. We're going to spend a lot more than that if you include the medical bills. <laughs> yeah, see, see that, that's the thing, eh? You young guys try to solve all your problems by writing a check. Whereas the men of Possum Lodge, we take action with our own hands. Huh. That explains the missing fingers. Well, Harold, sometimes one is enough. for the Possum Lodge word game, and this week, Mr. Mike Hammer is playing for a truly fabulous prize supplied by the Possum Lake Credit Union. <laughs> the Credit Union? The credit Union is going to tear up your mortgage free of charge. <laughs> Repossession's never been so easy. No fees, no fuss, no house. Up there. You have 30 seconds or so to get Mr. Mike Hammer to say this word. Beverage. Yeah. Beverage. Yeah, all right. Here. <laughs> oh. All right, uh, Mike, uh, when you have a beer, that's called... Breakfast. <laughs> okay, uh, let's say you're, you know, you're thirsty. Uh, you go down to the 7-Eleven for something cold. That's called... Shoplifting. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. I'm saying, like, what would you call the drink? Evidence. No, uh, no, no I'm just, I'm, I'm talking about just a, a term for a drink. A whiskey. I mean, like a, a generic, a generic, oh, a generic oh. word for drink. Uh, potato skin wine. Do you, do you know what generic means, Mike? Cheap. Okay, all right. Forget the alcohol. Forget alcohol, all right? What do you call a soft drink? Mix. Almost out of time, Uncle yeah, Red. Yeah, yeah, uh, All right, all right, Mike. In prison, okay, when you get a meal, it always comes with a... Hair in it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, at least with the food, you can see what it is. But, I mean, uh, who knows what's floating around in the beverage. Oh! oh. <laughs> you can't tear that building down. It's, it'll disintegrate. If you're going to move it, you have to move it all intact, in you know, one big piece. Please call a professional. They have the proper jacks, you know, and they got a vehicle with over 40 wheels on it. Oh, really? Well, guess what? Mr. Flaky Specs on his lenses. <laughs> yeah. We have a vehicle with 52 wheels. Vehicle with 52 wheels? Yes, sir. You do not! <laughs> what? Oh, no, let me guess, let me guess. You get what? You got the delivery truck and the tire company? No, 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 no. What? 
Go take a look in the parking lot. 52 wheels. Yeah. What kind of vehicle has 52 <laughs> wheels on it? <laughs> I don't see anything with 52 wheels on it. Do you see 13 pickup trucks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do is we're going to jack the building up with about 100 car jacks. <laughs> get her up uh, higher than the beds on the pickup trucks. And then we'll back seven trucks into the front end. We'll back six trucks into the back end. We'll drop the building right down so she sits on the beds. And then away you go. These guys in front just steer and the guys in the back are in reverse. So <laughs> we're probably uh, going to have to coordinate the drivers, you know. Your ideas, do they come to you in dreams? Oh, <laughs> It's so simple, okay? You got the pickups, you got 52 wheels, and it's like a, it's like a... Like a game of 52 pickup? <laughs> you know, a fella wrote me a letter complaining that we only do projects with cheap, crappy cars, and that's not fair to our affluent viewers who may have a luxury car that they love to recycle, but they just don't get any suggestions. Now, let me make one thing clear. Just because I may take a K car and turn it into a Zamboni, or a Ford, Ford Fairlane and turn it into a lawn tractor, doesn't mean you can't do the same thing with like a Bimmer or an Audi or something. Don't let my reality hinder your imagination. So this week, we're gonna do a project using this luxury vehicle, fully equipped with all the bells and whistles, right here on Handyman Corner. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna build something with this vehicle that every luxury car owner only dreams about. A back hoe. Or in this case, a front hoe. All right, you better listen up. Because I know a lot of you rich people just hire somebody when you have to do something that's either difficult or creative. All right, now what we need to do is to remove the cross piece thingy, the doohickey. The thing there that stops the ladder from, from doing the splits. Now you could, uh, you could take the rivets out of there, but hey, to affluent people, time is money. <laughs> All right, there we go. Now, those legs are free to open and wide up, close, whatever. We need a way, though, to keep them open. And in my experience, there's only two things that keep legs open. Childbirth and a thigh master. You rich guys may know of another thing. But I'm going with the thigh master. <laughs> All right, that's our basic back hole unit uh, put together there. And I've attached her to the front bumper here. Now comes the fun part. <laughs> All right, we need this thing to move in three ways, basically. First of all, we need this section to move so that the uh, scoop can go right up and over the dirt. Next, we need the ladder itself to squeeze together against the thigh master so that the scoop can actually pick up the dirt. And then lastly, we need the scoop itself to be able to pivot so that we can load and unload the dirt. All right, now, to do that, I'm gonna use these uh, clothesline bits and clothesline pulleys. I got these free from a neighbor who now has to buy a dryer. <laughs> all right, we'll hook all this up, and then we'll get to that fun part I spoke of earlier. why we had to use a luxury car, because many of the high-end power-operated options are actually going to be used to run our backhoe. For example, the height and the drag of the unit are going to be run by these cables, which are attached to our power windows, and the angle of the bucket is controlled by our power sunroof. Here, let me show you. All right, let's say you got to get a pile of dirt off your front lawn, because your in-laws are coming over, and they always steal your dirt. Control, or in this case, the driver's window. <laughs> All right, now we just gotta drop the bucket there with our sunroof control. And we just pull in the drag control on the passenger window. And then just raise her up. And then we 
can take her over where we want to dump her. Is that luxury or what? Remember, the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Oh yeah, we gotta dump the dirt too. What we have here is the Cadillac of backhoes. No, actually it's the backhoe of Cadillac. You know, getting older has its upside, and I don't just mean the seniors discount on the laxatives. <laughs> For example, old codgers can say anything they want to anybody, huh? They can tell a person the truth right to their face, and that person will smile and pat them on the back and congratulate them for being spunky and full of life. <laughs> See, when you reach your golden years, you can stop lying. <laughs> now, you, you spent your whole life kind of putting a good spin on things, eh? Because you wanted people to cut you some slack. So you lied. <laughs> First to your parents, then to your wife, then to your kids. <laughs> and they kind of got used to it. Huh? Your parents didn't really want to know what you were doing to all hours of the night. Your wife doesn't want to know how slimming that dress really is. <laughs> and your kids don't want to hear how much money is really in their college fund. <laughs> so you just be patient, eh? Just hang on for a few years, and then you can start telling the truth, huh? And people will think you're charming or amusing, or maybe they'll just blame the medication. <laughs> Now, when actually you start being honest, well, that's your decision. By the way, you look great. Have you lost weight? <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. <laughs> well, we did it. We got that building all jacked up. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, we got her, uh, got her totally jacked up, and it was rough, too, because the one corner was awful spongy there, and the jack didn't even catch till it bit into the east trough, for guys. sake. <laughs> We also got the building sitting right down on the trucks there. Seven trucks in the front end, six trucks in the back, and then old man Sedgwick brought his gremlin in right in the middle of the unit there. Well, you know, it was a gremlin. It's more of a dolly at this point. But uh, she's all loaded on there and she's balanced. So come on, Harold, let's get that baby into town. Me? I'm not going. I'm not driving no truck for that. Forget me. No. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No way, Jose. Uh-uh. Harold, Harold, we don't need drivers, okay? We need somebody to be in charge, eh? Someone to supervise, someone to, to yell out directions, you know, forward, backward, right, left, and so on, eh? We need a coordinator. We need you to supervise, Harold. Ah, yeah. Well. <laughs> Suppose it wouldn't hurt to have somebody involved with brains, would it? Hmm. Hey, wait a minute, you don't mind me running the show, Uncle Red? Because usually you reserve these cushy management jobs for yourself. Well, you know, Harold, I just, I just don't like the heights, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Heights? Yeah, well, um, <clears throat> it's only a one-story building, but, you know, sitting up there, straddling the peak, hanging onto the chimney, that's a job for a younger man. <laughs> this little contest that we have uh, at the lodge to get the first uh, trout of the season. I love that. I believe the size of the lure really, really makes a difference. And, uh, you know, one cast is worth three. And I got something there, got something. Bring her in on my very first cast. What have I got there? What have I got? What have I got? What is it? Oh, it feels like a good one. It feels like a What is it? Oh, it's a pair of boxer shorts. <laughs> you know, they're, they're hard to catch because they're bottom feeders. Uh, oh, by golly. Uh, wow. Well, oh. oh, man. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, Bill. Yeah. You're not using my rod, no, 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 I'm using my own fishing rod. So there's all kinds of ways to fish, Bill, and I'm using the lure. You just figure out another way to go fishing, that's your... What? What? What's he doing? Oh, looks... Looks like the medication kicked in. Why, well, it's, uh, it's a beautiful day there, and uh, something to sit on if I get tired. I guess this is the bear technique of... Uh... Yeah, right there, uh... Uh, lunch break for lunch, a little lunch break there. And, uh, you want any of this, Bill? You want any of this, uh, Bill? Bill, you want? Uh, all right, good then. And uh, still no fish. I think Bill may be having an effect on that. And, uh, what's going on? Oh, 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 my gosh, oh, my gosh, oh, 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 my gosh, no. Oh, no, 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 you gotta catch it. You, you can't just surround it, Bill. You gotta, you 
gonna get it. You gotta get it. Get it. Get it. Yeah, he's got her. He's got her. He's got her. Look out. Look out. Look out. Phil, look out. Look out. Look out. Look out. Look out. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. All right. All right. Oh boy. Okay. Here's why it's good to have a, always have a friend around. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Stand, Phil, stand still. I know where it is. Stand still, Phil. I know where it is. Here it is. There we go. Oh. Yeah. There we go. All right. All right. Go get her. Go get her. Go get her. Bill. 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 No, Bill. Bill. That's a Bill. That's my Bill. That's my gear. Bill. That's my Bill. Oh, my. That's a, hey. Hey. I borrowed that stuff. Bill. Get him. Get him. Bill, get him. Bill, Bill, get him, Bill, Bill. He's in the canoe, Bill, he's in the canoe. He's in, behind you, behind you, he's behind you. No, no, he's behind you, behind you, behind you. Bill, turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. He's, no, 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 he's in the canoe, he's in the canoe. Behind you, behind you, turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. Bill, Bill, you can miss him, he's in the canoe, he's in the canoe, he's in the canoe, he's behind you. Look, look, there he is, there you go, there you go. Not the axe, Bill, not the axe, not the axe. Bill, not the axe. Read my lips, not the axe, Bill. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, boy, oh, boy. That's a good idea. Get out into the deep stuff, Bill, that's a good plan. Oh, 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 Bill. Bill, you, you feel wet at all? Oh, okay. It's a good news, bad news thing, but you know what? I, I, I still sense an opportunity here. And there we go. There you go. That big lure's paying off. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, look, Bill. I got us the trout, buddy. Da -da 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 -da. This is the repair shop part of the show. We call, if it ain't broke, you're not trying. Joining me today is Edgar Montrose. Edgar is the only uh, dynamite expert in the Possum Lake area. The only one living, anyway. <laughs> no, sir, Red, they certainly don't. <laughs> if you call that living. <laughs> so what have you got today, Edgar? Oh, a very loud ringing in my head. <laughs> kind of like that, only louder. <laughs> All right, I guess the umbrella is what you want me to fix here, huh? Uh, that, that's, that, that's total, Edgar. Um, what I could do maybe is fix the holes in your hat. I'm hot. Your hat, Edgar. You can fix holes in clothing, by the way. If you're not good with a needle and thread, you can use the fashion designer secret weapon duct tape on that. <laughs> what happened to the umbrella? Oh, uh, the umbrella got wrecked when I pulled Flinty McClintock's tractor out of the mud. Apparently, he thought I had a truck with a winch. But I don't have a truck with a winch. I have dynamite. <laughs> so I blew her up out of there. You know, Red, these new tractors that they're building nowadays, they're very brittle. Uh, all right, Edgar, you know what? I, I gotta rethink here. I'm not, I'm not gonna plug up the holes in your hat, because... I really think your brain needs all the air it can get, you know? <laughs> what, what, what's wrong with you? Shingles. Well, uh, the good news is, that old building is out of the way forever. Beautiful old pioneer log cabin. Oh. <laughs> well, you guys are gonna save history, not make it. Well. I can't believe you didn't call the phone company. When you move a building down the street where it has telephone lines on both sides, you gotta call the phone company. <laughs> Because what they do is they take down the lines, and then once you pass, they put the lines back up. Well, we did half their job for them then, didn't we? <laughs> I'm glad I had that chimney to hold on to, at least. I got, like, telephone line burns all over my thighs. Oh, oh, and that's another thing, too. Yeah, you gotta phone the power company. What about the power lines? No, no, you know, that was bad. Yeah, that was bad. <laughs> that was real bad. Yeah. I mean, and you gotta, and I should suggest that you pre-measure all the bridges on your route to make sure they're wide enough. Yeah, yeah, especially that covered bridge. Uh, that was... <laughs> yeah, that poor old covered bridge. Yeah. Covered bridge that the Historical Society worked so hard to preserve. Well, it's not a covered bridge anymore, is it? Oh, just a bridge now. Yeah. Bridge surrounded by lumber. Yeah. You should have pre-measured. I know that. Or at least slowed down. Well, we, uh, now, come on, Harold. We couldn't slow down, because uh, once the power line set the cabin on fire, we had to pretty much... 
call it, you know? That's what I'm saying. And uh, I mean, the irony there was that we couldn't call in an emergency because the phone lines were down, so we actually had to, we had to drive the fire to the fire station. <laughs> yeah, poor old fire station. Fire station of the Historical Society worked so hard to preserve. <laughs> Fire station stood there for a hundred years, taking everything Mother Nature threw at it. Of course, that's not including, you know, a flaming log cabin coming at twice the speed limit. I know, I know that. I know that. But uh, you know, in fairness, for a fire station, it was pretty darn flammable. <laughs> and you know, and you know, full marks here to Buzz Sherwood, who realized that the fire trucks were actually trapped inside the burning. <laughs> Uh, stay. So what he did was he filled up his water bomber plane and he dropped water right onto the fire. So yeah, well he tried. Well, he tried. Yeah, that's what. I mean. He got the Baptist Church. Yeah, yeah. Poor old Baptist Church. Yeah. The one the historical said he tried so hard to preserve. Yeah, yeah. yeah that church didn't have a prayer. Really. Did you learn anything? Any any little anything? Did you learn anything from all this? Well, I did, Harold, yeah. I, I think I learned what ironic means, you know? I, I never really got it before, but I think I'm there now. Wheel of the Possum, it's meeting yeah. time. You go ahead, Harold, I'll be, I'll be down in a minute. You all right? Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. What, what's that, what? A little bit of history. Yeah, there you go. Easy now, easy, easy, easy. If my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. I know I was supposed to call, but boy, I got a dandy excuse. <laughs> and to the rest of you, on behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, thanks for watching and keep your stick on the ice. <laughs>